Uh, greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. Uh, uh, I keep finding my videos being deleted by uh, you know who, and some of them, I don't even know why they're deleting them. Like that fourth dimension uh, video. I have no idea why they deleted that. There's nothing really controversial at all about that. And yet it was gone. I, I, and they don't even tell me that the videos have been deleted because they violate some communist uh, standard or whatever. I have no idea. All I know is um, I'm kind of concerned to even say anything anymore for uh, concern that they're going to uh, delete my channel on you know who. And I want to keep it up as long as I can. I mean, they're passing laws left and right. Uh, Florida passed a law where uh, if I repeat what they are saying, I could be charged with a hate crime. Uh, when they say it, it's okay. But when I s repeat what they say, it turns into, you know, your aunt and then semi antism yeah so yeah and we got national things going on too uh it's getting to the point where it's just unfruitful to even say anything anymore and like i say uh you go to amazon get at least a 64 if not 128 gig get a 3.0 or better usb drive Send it to me. I'll copy everything. Send it back to you. I got a lot of medical literature. If you catch my drift, it's really worth having. I mean, you can get a uh, 128 gig drive for about fifteen, sixteen dollars, and have Amazon even deliver it to me. It'll save you the postage, even uh, if you're a Prime member. I'm lazy. I, you know, I don't like Amazon, but I'm lazy. I don't like going shopping for a couple of items it's just not worth doing but uh yeah it's getting really bad i don't know what to do anymore uh i've got things on odyssey and rumble but i've heard rumble's been deleting uh videos too so you know things are what do you do when uh the state passes a law and they have to comply with the law and remove videos because of wrong, uh, you know, think. So maybe it's time to just give it a rest. I don't know. I mean, I've covered, I've covered a lot of stuff. I could do a lot more, but I don't want to take the chance of my channel being deleted. So, you know, what can I tell you? So I might just give up for a while. Um, I've got so many other things going on. Uh, I feel, I just don't feel the fire that I used to feel years ago. It's just not there anymore. So maybe my time on socialist media is done. I don't know. But I've, I'm really disappointed. But I've, you know what? I've known that this has been coming for about the last 15 years or so. I mean, I, seriously, I've known this is coming. I just didn't think it'd come as fast as it is. So, uh, yeah. So, like I say, I got a lot of information, uh, and you'd be better off getting a drive that you can uh, listen to without having to go online and a, a lot of really good medical information and great videos too some some are from other people and uh, I dare not post them here dare not uh uh no way so I don't know what to do I really don't I was hoping to do another series but uh the, the, the subject matter would get me deleted from probably the internet.
plus all the laws that are passing. So if anybody's interested, send me a drive. I'm serious. You can get a 128 gig 3.0 or better USB drive. And uh, I mean, I got all kinds of uh, medical treatments that are have been uh, proven to be useful, but there's no money to be made for the uh, you know who's. And plus, they don't want us healthy. They want us to be less than healthy, if you catch my drift. So, like I say, send me uh, send me a thing, and uh, I'll uh, put everything on it, and you can spend probably a couple of months looking at it. Yeah, I tell you what, I got a lot of good videos. Uh, people that don't believe in the crazy stuff going on, you just go to the uh, video videos uh, folder that I got, and you can show them some stuff, and they would be like, "Where'd you get this?" You know, because uh, a lot of really good things that just are not allowed on the internet anymore. So, uh, I hope to meet some of you at the end of the road. Maybe I'll do a, one last video about what we should expect. Well, let's take a look. Uh, I don't know if this applies to me. I don't think so, because I've been very vocal. Um, somebody said I was uh, reminded them of a sheepdog barking to warn the sheep that the wolves are coming, and I really appreciated that remark. Uh, you know who you are over in uh, the land where the New Testament came from. Oh, yeah. But in Amos 5 and verse 13, it says, Therefore the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. So those that see the evil coming, they're going to keep quiet. Uh, to say that the Lord is angry with the West it would be an understatement. And the church has allowed great evil, so... The Lord's going to let the evil get rid of the church, at least our physical presence on the face of the earth. It's coming, people. It is coming. And the church world is going to be our enemy. Because when all the TV preachers have the rabbis on, and they all proclaim that Messiah has come and that Jesus was a false Messiah, false prophet, blah, blah, blah. You better believe they're going to turn against the remnant. I mean, you go, I, I was, I went to, a, I was invited to a so-called church, uh, Cal, Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. And they had huge parking lots. I mean, it took 15 minutes to find the car. I mean, seriously. I, I didn't realize how big it was. I thought it was one parking lot. Now it's three parking lots. I mean, it was like acres. Uh, probably parking for 5,000 people. And uh, I was like, after listening to them and, you know, if you had 5,000 people in the service, I doubt if there's even 50 that would be willing to die for their faith. I wonder if there'd be five that was willing to die for their faith. I mean, everybody thinks they're not going to be here for any uh, persecution. And they don't bother to read the Bible. They don't bother. I mean, who, why should I bother reading the Bible? It's such a waste of time. my time. You know, I could be watching... Uh, 
NBA, uh, the Final Four, or uh, the Stupid Bowl on the NFL, or or the um, World Series, uh, or whatever new movies out. It's just, it's sad. It's really sad. I always hope that one day a, a group of people would contact me and say, hey, we got a small group here, and Bob, why don't you come here and, you know, be a, a teacher with us? And I guess it wasn't in the Lord's will, because, you know, the more I learn about the so-called church world, the more I want to stay far, far away from it. Really, I do. Uh, people who ripped me off the worst have been churchgoers. Arkansas and in Tennessee. And, uh, yeah. May the Lord give them their reward swiftly. What can I tell you? So, it's disheartening, really. But believe me, I know... Uh, I know what's going on. You know, I've been watching them for over 30 some odd years. Uh, what's going on. So, you watch when the uh, TV preachers all procl proclaim that uh, Messiah has come. They're going to they're gonna flock to him and worship him. You watch. It's going to happen. Oh, let's do a mini Bible study. John chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus speaking. Let not your heart be troubled. Good advice. Don't let your heart be troubled. You know, we know these things are going to come to pass. And for some reason, the Lord picked each and every one of us to live in these time period. Uh, I don't know why, but he did. And uh, he wants us to endure unto the end. Um, so let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I don't think it's going to be retirement condos that are uh, 600 square feet. No. Mansions. And uh, by the way... I don't think there's going to be that many of them. I really don't. You know, everybody thinks that, uh, you know, these mega churches are, you know, 5,000 people in a service. They're all saved. Uh, I don't think so. But, hey, that's just my opinion. And I don't make those decisions. So, well, I tell you what, when I was a kid, there was a lot of people would think that I'd be the last person in the world uh, being a Bible teacher. Ugh. Never, there's going to be a lot of people ain't going to believe it. Bob, what are you doing here? Only by the grace of God. What can I tell you? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. That's right. When Christ comes again, he's going to come in the clouds. The sun's going to shine. The, the, well, maybe not the sun. Well, the S-O-N, the sun. There's going to be brightness from the east to the west. The whole world's going to light up. There ain't going to be no darkness when the Lord comes in the clouds of glory. I will come again. There ain't going to be no secret flying away until uh, the whole shebang comes crashing down. No. When the Lord comes back with his army in the clouds with glory, the whole world's going to light up and all the wicked are going to try to hide underneath the rocks. And it ain't going to do them any good. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Tell that to Billy Goat Graham. He thinks there's a certain group of people that have a covenant, an everlasting covenant with the Father, and it doesn't matter if they know Christ or not. But I think he's a, uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing. And the world loved him. What does the Bible say about the world loving you? Uh, we'll take away. Well, we're going to take. We're going to take a look at that. In John fifteen eighteen, Jesus said, "If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you." Oh yeah. Luke sixteen twenty two. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company. You don't have to separate from the world. The worlds will separate from you. When you start spouting the name of Jesus, who is Christ, and repentance and wickedness and sin to be hated, and they'll separate from you. And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the man, Son of Man's sake... Rejoice, rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. You know what they did to a lot of the prophets? They killed them. Oh yeah. You don't like the message? Kill the messenger. You know, the prophets would call people back to the Lord and pronounce judgment upon them. They don't want to hear that stuff. Hey, let's kill this guy. And they did. Just remember, the tares, the weeds, uh, the weeds, weeds, W-E-E-D-S, the weeds are growing up with the wheat. And a wheat Wheat can uh, wheat and sheep can act like a weed or a goat, and the goats can act like sheep to fool the sheep. But goats are goats and sheep are sheep, and wheat is wheat and we weeds are weeds. Just because a, a sheep, uh, well, just because a goat believes in Jesus. Well, even the devil believes in Jesus, doesn't turn a goat into a sheep. And just because a, a weed believes in Christ, doesn't turn him into wheat or her. I mean, even the devil believes in Christ. The devils know who Christ is. They believe in him. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, but as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. You have no idea, me neither, what God has prepared for his people. All right, let's go to Revelation 21. This is going to be just the barely the introduction. Verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Why a new heaven and a new earth? Because the first ones were polluted spiritually and physically. You know... A lot of blood 
And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. You know, your modern day demon nominational preachers will tell you, oh, Jerusalem is the holy city. Uh, you mean that cesspool over in the Middle East is a holy city? Uh, I don't think so, but uh, yeah. Why is there a new one? Because the old one's polluted. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And guess what? I used to do weddings. I did weddings for probably a decade. I did hundreds of weddings. Hundreds. And on a wedding day, I had never seen a bad-looking bride. Absolutely never. I mean, not just their physical attributes, but, you know, dress nicely. Of course, I saw a couple of brides that uh, wore such skimpy clothing that I would have been embarrassed as a father to have been you know at the wedding I mean some of them their breasts were just about flopping out of the clothing you know but uh, yeah I, I just I don't get that you know you're supposed to show that to the groom on his wedding night not to the uh, you know mom dad and everybody else and your brothers and sisters and the groom's family you know well but I digress so But New Jerusalem is going to come down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Never seen a bad-looking bride. Never. Some were prettier than others, but uh, they were all dressed nice. Think about that. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha, the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Omega, the last letter of the Greek alphabet. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely he that overcometh shall inherit all things do you know we got to be overcomers let's read that again he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son we're gonna be the sons of God and the daughters Verse 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The first death is going to be your physical death. The second death is going to be your spiritual death. And there's a lot of people now that even deny that hell even exists. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, Jesus talked about hell more than he did heaven. But, hey, why listen to Jesus when you could listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses or... Jim Rizzoli or whatever, you know. A pastor that I really respected, Pastor Gaiman, once said, if it, uh, concerning a doctrine, if it's new, 
it's not true. Yeah, if it's a new doctrine, it's not true. And just because they got rid of all the old books don't mean, you know, doesn't make it so. Verse 9, Revelation 21 and verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And they want me you to think it's the bride is uh, those that reject Jesus. Uh, I don't think so. Second chapter of the book of Revelation and verse 9. Look it up. Third chapter of the book of Revelation and verse 9. Especially look that one up. Verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, sending out, descending out of the heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a great wall. Wow, you ever heard the the uh, Antichrist telling you, oh, walls don't work. Walls don't work. Well, they, they, this wall's going to work. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. There's going to be an angel that's a gatekeeper. And names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of of the children of Israel. Uh, did you notice there is no 13th Gentile gate? Did you notice that? There's no 13th Gentile gate. Hmm. Verse 13. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Why twelve apostles? Twelve tribes. And I think it's, uh, I think Paul's going to be one of them. But hey, that's just my opinion. Verse 15. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height, height of it are equal. A furlong is about uh, 70 meters, 220 yards, or an eighth of a mile. So you figure 12,000... Uh, times that. That's if you can believe what they're telling you. 12,000 furlongs. Verse 17. And he measured the wall thereof, and 140 and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. A cubit was approximately from the elbow to the tip of the index finger, or approximately half a meter or 18 inches. Approximately. And it's going to be 140 and 4 times that. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was of pure gold, like unto clear glass. Um, I don't know if you know it, but glass is a crystal. That means all the, uh, supposedly all the molecules, all the atoms are all lined up in such a way that it allows light to pass through it transparent gold so and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire the third a chalcedony the fourth an emerald the fifth sardonyx the sixth sardius the seventh chrysolite the eighth beryl the ninth a topaz the tenth a chrysophilus something like that the eleventh of jacinth and the twelfth an amethyst. Um, if you don't know it, if you read the uh, gemstones on the high priest's 
breastplate, these are what they are. Each one of those stones represented one of the 12 tribes. Don't ask me what it is, because I couldn't tell you. I don't think the Bible gives you enough information to, to tell you. Anything I told would tell you would be a guess. So, Verse 21, And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. You ever heard of the pearly gates? Well, this is where it comes from. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the light, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the light, uh, and the Lamb, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations, you know this word nation is goy, goyim. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nope, that's the Old Testament word. This is the Greek New Testament word. It comes from the word ethnos. It's where we get the word ethnic, as in uh, Caucasians are an ethnic group. Yeah, the word nation and Gentiles is the same word, whether it's in the Greek or in the Hebrew. The Hebrew as in the Old Testament. New Testament was written in Greek. The entire New Testament was written in Greek. Don't let anybody tell you that Matthew was written in Hebrew. It wasn't. They're liars. Um, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whosoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Let's read that again. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So, this is what we have to look forward to. In Matthew 10, 22, Jesus speaking said, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And that name is Jesus. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. I don't hear anything about eternal security. Once saved, always saved. You have to endure unto the end. Jesus said, if you deny him before men, that he would deny you before the Father and his angels. Good idea not to deny him. If we're supposed to die for the faith, just remember, guaranteed ticket to heaven. In Matthew 10 and verse 16, Jesus speaking, Behold, I send you forth as sheep, in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge, whip, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Wow. Well, that tells you who's going to be behind it all, right? 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake. For a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought. Don't think about it. Take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of the Father which speaketh in you. The Holy Spirit is going to put words in your mouth. That will be your promise of the Lord that you belong to him. Verse 21. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father of the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Why? Because they went to public school for their whole life and was taught evolution and Jesus was a myth and uh, 
you know what writes the uh, letter writes uh, can you give me an L uh, can you give me a B uh, can you give me a G can you give me a T writes and uh, your parents are old-fashioned and they're a bunch of Ray sis and uh, ho mo fo you know yeah verse 22 and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that endureth to the end shall be saved but when they persecute you in this city flee ye into another for verily I say unto you ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the son of man come you know in times past People basically had to flee for their lives with whatever they could carry on their backs. They left their jobs, their homes uh, behind, seriously. And uh, there's going to come a day that the Lord's going to destroy the cities. But before he does that, his people will be forced out. It'll happen. I don't know if you've ever read the story about Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. They will force you out. And then the Lord will, when there's not ten righteous people in a city, look out. God might destroy it. Earthquake, I don't know. Um, what was it, about a hundred and some odd years ago? The San Francisco earthquake, a really bad one. All the water, well, when the earth moved, all the water lines in the ground, the pipes broke, and the fire department couldn't get any water. So the fire just burned and burned and burned. And, and plus, you know, what happens to the gas lines? You know, the natural gas lines, LP gas. When those lines, when the pipes break, you know, it only takes a spark to to start a fire and then you got this gas line going on and you know it's uh people don't realize that uh cities are uh not a place people's believers want to be at least not in this world so but if you read revelation 12 god's people are going to have to survive in the wilderness for about three and a half years of utter hell on earth while the man of sin the son of perdition the beast the antichrist rules and reigns and all the whole world will call him oi the messiah has come i don't think so but we'll see what happens just remember people what it's what it's at the end of the road just remember and uh I look forward to meeting a lot of you. I really do. You know, I this is a really a thankless job. It really is. You know, uh, you know, I don't I don't do this for money. And uh, you know, I, I appreciate the encouragement some of you have given me. There's been a lot of times I just wanted to walk away and quit, and then somebody writes me and says, you know, thank you for teaching me. Uh, you know, I've learned so much. I mean, I have a lot to learn too, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to get that once in a while. It really is. So devil's kids have quit writing me hate mail. So they kind of gave up on me. Uh, what's the Bible say? Uh, James four, seven. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yeah, you know, when the devil knows that uh, he's not going to be able to change your mind, he'll give up and move to, uh, I guess you could say greener pastures. I don't know, something like that. So, 1 Peter 5, 8, Peter says, be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion he wants to 
pretend like he's Christ, but he's not. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And when you read the Bible, you will know his plans. And what can I tell you? Let's read uh, Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Boy, that's a true statement if I ever heard one. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be, be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and what is truth? The words of Christ in the Bible. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. What does the breastplate cover? Your heart. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. What does the helmet cover? Your head, your, your brain, salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication of all saints. And let's close with this. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3, Paul writes to Timothy, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something, people. Being a soldier is a hard life. It really is. I was in the army. There's nothing easy about being a soldier. Nothing. Especially when you in battle. Uh, to quote my World War II combat veteran father, he said, peacetime army is bullshit. Unquote. That's what he told me. And yeah, pretty much is. But wartime army, hardness, people. And being in the army of Christ in today's evil, wicked world, it ain't no cakewalk, let me tell you. No way. All right, uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Send me that 128 gig drive, 3.0. Last chance, people. This might be my last video on tube. You never know. Take care. My address below.